stands wherever you may be. Welcome back to another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. Join your host, Bill Alpstein, and co-host, sports writer and football analyst, Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. And welcome back to another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Alpstead, sitting down with Keith Myers. Hey, welcome into the show, Keith. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. It's, God, it's primetime weather here in Arizona now. We finally got out of our cold season, which means high in the upper 60s. <laughs> Just saying that out loud is absurd. It and is then, absurd. Uh, today, it was like 80 degrees and... Um, a little breeze and it's i just said it was this the weather things just told me it was still 79 degrees outside at 5 30 in the afternoon as we're recording this so i'm loving it because now <laughs> it's i'm not cold anymore so i've adjusted now to this climate to the point where upper 60s just doesn't cut it anymore it's got to be close to 80 or i'm i'm not satisfied <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna become one of those guys that's out in the, you know, sweater and winter jacket. When I, it's 65. Oh, dude, I was I was wearing like one of those like heavy blankets from Costco, you know, the the other day as like a second <laughs> garment over. Yeah. Anyway, um, today we are going to be talking about kind of a made up show, but it talks about um, <laughs> it talks about prospects. And it talks about the Seahawks, so it must it's going to be a good show. It also talks about the Senior Bowl, which just happened. Um, I mean, the Senior Bowl week was last week, so all the practices and everything were there. They were streamed um, live for the most part, and then the game on Saturday, which is a lot less meaningful than anything else. But um, it's the other part that that's really meaningful for the teams. But yeah, so it's it's players that were there. That looks sea hockey. And I know that the Seahawks love the Senior Bowl. They scout the Senior Bowl hard. They draft a lot of Senior Bowl players. Um, and that's just one of the ways that we know that this front office works. So it's worth yeah. taking a look at these players. Yeah, you know, it's one of those deals, too, where um, Jim, ne Jim Nagy does a really good job. He's really revamped the bowl um, to, to make it easier and better for some of these guys to come in from all 32 teams. Uh, so he's very accommodating in that way. And then he has done a great job making the Senior Bowl one of the premier destinations for NFL draft prospects. And so you end up getting, uh, they send out like 115, 120 um, invites, and they get 112 guys that, that agree to come in. You know, mm -hmm. so there's just very few guys that opt out. Of those, Jim Nagy said that 107 to 108 prospects this year are going to get drafted. So it's a great place to, like, find everyone in one spot. And he allows every prospect to be interviewed up to, like, 15 or 20 minutes with each team. So, I mean, that's there's just a lot there um, that, that you got to like. Now, for me... I love this week because I had a little bit of time that I was able to watch some practices. Also watched a little bit of the game. It was kind of in the background. I was kind of hit and miss on on watching it, but I read up on all the notes and made sure that I was looking at prospects that were sea hockey for sure because, you know, that's that's the whole purpose. And I have a pretty good list of players in almost every position except for quarterback. Um, but we can talk about quarterbacks if you want. I just don't. Yeah, you know, the Seahawks aren't completely the relevant. Seahawks aren't in the market for one, so it doesn't um, seem like it. Yeah, although you honestly, wouldn't know that from a few other people online posting about Russell yeah, Wilson being traded. Imminently. Seriously, everyone, not just stop with the Russell Wilson stuff. The team has come. The team has said they are not trading him unless he demands a trade, and he has said, "I want to be here." which means he's not demanding a trade. So can we just stop already? Right. Exactly. Um, so can we start with I, the defensive line? Oh, sure. Or is that Absolutely. how you're going to start? I just... No, I'm, no, I'm no. no. That's, that's, that's great. I, I just was looking at the anyway. Seahawks needs. I was looking at the Seahawks needs, and we know they need help on the defensive line. And there are just some really Seahawks yeah. guys that uh, really fit um, what they need and everything. 
I really wanted to start with uh, Perry and Winfrey, the defensive mm-hmm. tackle out of Oklahoma, um, who super long arm, six three um, three twenty six was what he was what he's listed at for the Senior Bowl. Even though he played lighter than that, but he was just unblockable and looked crazy good uh, yeah. all week. And I'm like, can you imagine him next to Puna Ford and in the interior of that line getting up front um, and putting pressure on the the quarterback up the middle rather than just waiting for the defensive ends to get around the corner. I, it yeah, sounds right, like a, right. a great, great combination. My only concern is that he'll be off the board before Seattle picks. Yeah. Um, the good news is he's not the only guy. I mean, he really was disruptive in the senior bowl and we're just talking about senior bowl prospects here, Keith. Right. Yep. So, I mean, there's not, you, you can't give up on the entire process just because your senior bowl guy wasn't there for sure. I just want to make that clear that we're just talking about senior bowl prospects here for yeah, everyone true. out there. I know that you know that, but for everyone out there that's listening, we're not including like um, some of the other guys that, that will definitely have their impact known when it comes uh, around to the combine and so forth and at the mm-hmm. actual draft. But I thought Federian Math, this is another guy that's in the same mold as Perry and Winfrey. Now, Perry and Winfrey has his knock is somewhat if an inconsistent kind of a thing, um, more or less, because he's definitely got the physical tools at 6'4, 303, runs a five. 0840s got the length, uh, uh, I think it's <laughs> nearly 86 inch wingspan, Keith. I know, um, crazy, and he's huh? a younger prospect too. He's only 21 years old, right? And mm-hmm. so there's a lot to like about that. And he went to the Senior Bowl with the idea that he would be there to show that he could be consistent. And he did. He showed up every day. He was very consistent. He put guys back on their backs, on um, you know, offensive linemen. And, um, just look really good. And I thought Federian Mathis did too. 6'4", th- uh, 313, runs a 5'2", 240. So he's going to be less explosive than Winfrey. Uh, but he's got the length, a, a 83 and a half inch wingspan. He's an older prospect though. But he does have a, uh, he's 24. Or he'll be 24 in September. Um, he does have a, a, a bigger kind of track record, if you will, of consistency over time. Um and that that would be my only concern with uh, with Winfrey. What do you think of Travis Jones out of UConn? Yeah, space heater. So he's he's got that kind of like a, he's kind of a run stuffing space eater, take on double teams kind of a player with the upside potential of being a pass rush guy um, as time goes on as as they developing it develop him as a prospect. What do you yeah, think? I mean. He, he's a, a big guy, 6'4", um, 326. But if you go and watch the one-on-one drills, uh, he, the guards and centers just couldn't stay in front of him. He was did a great job of of getting in on the body, getting his, getting their shoulders turned and getting by him. And, and uh, that is a great sign for an interior uh, defensive lineman. A guy that can get in on, on the body of a, a guard is a guy that can beat a guard. So... I agree, I, um, Keith, but what do you think of the guards? And, well, and we'll talk about them later on in this show, but what do you think of the guards and the tackles that he had to kind of face at the Senior Bowl as compared to what he might look like? Or look that's a, that is a solid ball? point because the the guards at the Senior Bowl weren't great. I mean, it they weren't. It, they weren't it, really it, holding anybody back. Yeah, they were, they they were having they were struggling. I think a couple of the of the offensive tackles did fine, but a lot of the offensive linemen really struggled. You know who I like is, um, and and I really like after the Senior Bowl is Logan Hall out, um, of, out of Houston, 6'6", 280 pounds. He's more. He's not going to be your nose tackle guy, but he's going to be your three tech guy, similar to like a Jaron Reed, especially if he adds another ten pounds or so, which his frame says that he can. He's got a shorter wingspan, so he doesn't have the length. That that the other two guys that we've mentioned already have, but he's got the speed at four five eight forty. Reports are that he can get that down closer to four five at the combine, which would be super interesting. That I think that that would. He's already kind of gone up draft boards, I think, after the Senior Bowl. But mm-hmm. I think if he if he's able to run and show the athleticism, um, this guy could be a guy that could 
could creep up the draft boards a little bit because he's just he's, he's really disruptive. He's really undersized for a four three defensive tackle. Um, you know, at, at like two eighty, and so I think a better fit for him is in a is a three four defensive end, uh, where he can do all the things that he needs to do, but have help on both sides of him. Yes, uh, because there's there's linebackers, uh, um, you know, kind of both sides. He's not not responsible for. Um, there was t- the all, of, all I'll say no. is there was a little bit of chatter by Nagy that he would um, he would be a guy that they would watch inside because um, there was talk that he would beef up for the combine, and I don't That's know exactly possibly. what that means. Um, whether that means he's going to come in at 300, 290, 295, if, if teams are looking at him as a five tech slide into a three tech, like you're kind of indicating, or whether mm-hmm. he's going to be inside all the time. From what I'm understanding, the most of his work, most of his production, kind of came. On an interior pass rush this last season, so, yeah, and I, but, I think. It, but at Houston, the, you're going to be able to do that. And as a uh, as a four three in a four three defense, playing that three tech, he's going to be undersized and a kind of a liability against the run. That's not true if he's playing defensive end in a three four. Um, that you want guys that are that are two um, eighty two ninety. Maybe eh, two eighties probably better. Um, that can be disruptive. That that's what you're looking for. Those are the guys that are really hard to find. Those are the guys that that if you're going to make that transition to a three four, uh, that's the thing that's going to stop you from being able to do it. Is being able to find the two hundred and eighty pound guys that yeah. can be disruptive. Another another guy right in that mold is Zach Carter out of Florida. Um, six four two ninety, same sort of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, how about defensive ends, Keith? So defensive end, like, um, I don't like, there's so many in this draft that I like. And I mean, should we talk about Jermaine Johnson? Cause he's about well, to see how he is. Gonna, he did, yeah, he's, not gonna, he's not making it out of the top did, half of the yeah, first round. I did focus on the second, <laughs> third, fourth round kind of guys in my, in my entire list, you know, mostly yeah. that, but so I didn't, I didn't include him, but certainly. In a, you know, in a scenario where we could pick up an extra pick. I mean, that guy's actually going to probably now go in the top 15. So I don't, I don't yep. think he's even a possibility. But I do like him as a player. Um, he's just right behind guys like, um, you know, guys at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, Thibodeau and Hutchinson. Um, yep, absolutely. And, I mean, I would get like, is, it, is he sea hockey? Absolutely. But the Seahawks don't have a pick in a range, you yeah. know, in the in the early to late teens, um, where he's going to go. So it's it's let's not talk about him. Right. How about instead we we focus on guys like um, Kinsley in in Agbari, in Yeah, um, and a guy with an eighty four inch wingspan. Yeah, uh, explosive. I don't. Yeah. I liked what I saw from him coming um, off the edge. He won with power. He won with uh, speed. Good bend to get around the corner. Offensive linemen really struggled with him. Yeah, there's like a group of, of four guys here that are pretty interesting. Three of them are going to be second and, and fringe third round guys. Guys like uh, Maje Sanders out of Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, Mafe really helped himself at the Senior Bowl. He was unstoppable, unblockable at the Senior Bowl, according to most reports. Mm-hmm. Dominique Robinson is a guy that I'm interested in that's going to be possibly available in the back of the third, fourth round kind of a, a thing. Miami of Ohio, 6'4, 256. He's got the 33 and 3 8 inch arms. 83 inch wingspan it runs a four six two forty, which is very respectable at that size. Um, so just off, you know, of, of the top top guys, he's in the, that second tier. Um, Isaiah Thomas is another guy that's going to be maybe fifth round ish kind of guy that I'm interested in for the Seahawks. Um, you know, the Seahawks only have their second. I think they have third and two fourths, a fifth and and a sixth, right? Um, maybe a seventh too. Um, or they don't have the six and they have the seventh. Um, Isaiah Thomas, Oklahoma, 6'5", 258, 34 inch arms, um, runs a 4'7", 440. Um, you know, he's just a real good aggressive um, player, uh, tracks the ball, can play both, um, can drop back into coverage too if he needs to. 
Um, and at that size and that spot, you're going to be looking at him as being that strong side guy, similar to um, to the role that Taylor plays currently on the team. Yeah, and then um, one of the guys that I'm going to keep an eye on is Sam Williams out of Old Miss. Um, guy that looked explosive with a great first step. His ability to bend and get around the corner was nice. Uh, I don't think he's like overly dominant as a as a um, an edge player, but he's a guy that's going to get a bunch of sacks, and he's got the 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 traits that you're looking for. And so I think as a guy in the late two, early three area, if you're if you're picking there, which Seattle has, you know, second round pick in that range. Um, he's a guy that you could look at and go, that's, that is a going to be a productive pass rusher. Um, and so I think you could do far worse than a guy like Sam Williams. Um, where do you want to go? Let's just stick to the defense. Um, what do you got for linebackers? Because the Seahawks are in a weird spot at linebacker where they've got, uh, currently two of the best in the game. Um, there they could use a third, but they've actually got a, a reasonable, like floater guy in that can play all different positions. Um, but they, you know, if there's any kind of transition to a different style of defense, they're going to need a linebacker. So, and then yeah. there's also the question of, you know, Bobby Wagner, and whether he'll still be around. So, yeah. Or whether um, he changed positions as you have suggested. Mm -hmm. So um, where, what were you seeing at linebacker and um, you know, are there guys that, that you really like, uh, to come to Seattle. Yeah, you know, there's a player that I was really drawn to at the Senior Bowl, Chad uh, Muma, uh, the inside linebacker from Wyoming, 6'3", 241. He's not as quick as Bobby was coming out of college for sure. It runs a 4'6", 540. Mm -hmm. But he's just really instinctual, really um, not spectacular at any one thing, but he's very, very good at everything, including diagnosing, being a natural, instinctive feel for the game, um, playing all three positions. He's kind of a heavy hitter, uh, old school kind of guy, thumper, good, solid production in college. Um, and, and really turned out at the senior bowl, like came in as kind of a defensive leader, sort of a guy. Um, and, um, it just kind of a play viewed as being a playmaker just all around. Sounds like Jay, um, KJ Wright coming out of college. Yeah. Um, well, guy you know, didn't, he, didn't have the speed at, you know, four, six, four, seven, but we had the length, so he was yeah. just as effective in in uh, coverage and just super instinctual and yeah. you know just well. Really you know who smart. he reminded me of. I'll be honest is um, is Cody Barton. You know, out of out of Utah, um, just unheralded because of the school he went to, and you know they're they're starting to be known now for their defense. But back back then, it was um, you know who was he and why did. Why did we go up and get him in the draft? Um, but Chad Moom is going to be a good, li solid linebacker in the NFL. I thought Seahawks may be in the situation where either they're moving on from Bobby Wagner or they're transitioning from Bobby Wagner. And um, they've already got Brooks in there, but maybe they don't want to play Brooks at middle linebacker. Maybe they want a true middle linebacker to come in and kind of run the show and let Brooks use his athleticism on the outside. Chad Moom would be a guy. Yeah. Um, so another, one of the guys that I was looking at, and I honestly, he was not on my radar, um, before the senior bowl week was Sterling Weatherford, um, uh, out of Miami of Ohio guys, six, four, two thirty, which puts him, you know, a great size and, and, uh, athleticism for a, a linebacker spot, um, moved to the ball. Well, got up, made a lot of tackles near the line of scrimmage, uh, and was good in coverage. So I thought that he was a guy that, that really raised his stock um, because I think there are a lot of people like me who just had no idea who he was before Senior Bowl week. And now we're like, okay, we need to like figure out where he goes. <laughs> and I think it's going to be much higher on draft boards than any of us had envisioned before this week just simply because we didn't know who he was. So um, what do you think about uh, Sterling Weatherford? Yeah, I mean, everything that you just said, I think he turned out well at the senior bowl, had some great plays, um, especially during the, the practice week. I uh, didn't really notice him during the game, so that doesn't mean he didn't show up. Um, I just didn't take notice. Um, another couple of guys on my radar are Darian Beavers and Damone Clark, as well as Troy Anderson out of Montana State, kind of a, a smaller school guy, got invited to the senior bowl. Uh, created some buzz there at 6'4", 242, um, because he's just flying around all over the place and making plays. Um, and that was that's my list. 
you got any anybody else? Um, the only one that uh, that I saw that was that I was interested in was um, Channing Tindall out of Georgia. Um, and everyone just, wants those Georgia guys. I mean, it's Georgia. That, that defense was so good, right? Um, and so, yeah, it's Georgia. There's going to be a Georgia tax in um, in the <laughs> yeah in, in right. the draft this year, where guys from Georgia he's, are going to are going to well, be and he's just so higher. fast, you know, and you just can't and teach that was why. Teeth. And that was why. So, is he super impressive and and flashy and like you know uh, flash like all pro or you know Pro Bowl ability? I don't know if he did that. Well, I don't even know if you speed, can really evaluate that based on how many guys they had on that defense. You that's know, he, true. But I'm just saying he was so fast that uh, watching his tape that I was like, okay, well, how is he going to show up at the Senior Bowl? And like I said, he wasn't flashy. But man, his speed did show up and he was in places and you're like, oh, he was there making that tackle. And you're like, wait, how far did he have to go in order to make that tackle? And it was a long way. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all the way down the right. down, down the line and, of scrimmage. And and, like, and what you just said oh. too is is points to uh, his ability to play special teams. You know, that's a guy that you'd want on your roster as well to be a great special teams player, make your tackles downfield similar to the role that Cody Barton plays right now or Nick Ballour, a guy mm-hmm. like that's going to be on your special teams and making plays all over the, all over the place. Um, and I think Tindall's going to be around in the fourth or fifth round. If I think he's the fourth time. rounder guy. And I think he's, he's um, that's a great value right there. It is know. especially with his speed. So yeah. Um, How about safety? Okay. So safety is. And what do you, well, first let's have this little conversation about we, we had, a couple days ago with regards to the safety position on the Seahawks and what it might look like and why we might be looking at some of the players that we're looking at. Well, okay. So with Ed Donatel, when he signed to, or when he said he was coming to Seattle as a defensive assistant, um, but not the coordinator, uh, we made some, uh, basically some, you know, (sighs) inferences that's the word i'm looking for inferences based on that that this is that they were looking at adding you know multiple guys and trying to get a lot of um experience and on the defensive coaching staff maybe it'll make a transition to a different scheme and that kind of stuff now it appears that donatel is leaving for the vikings before he even gets into town yeah it doesn't appear Um, he's he's actually going he's he signed his deal no it actually he did sign yeah yeah so um so he's not coming to Seattle um to say or to say um still isn't in town or you know in, in this direction so I don't know if that's gonna happen. we've got a passing game coordinator from Minnesota that was at Minnesota last so, year now yeah and but, so it looks more and more like Seattle's scheme is going to stay very similar to its scheme in the past um four three offset and um you know cover, a lot of cover three stuff so with that in mind what I'm looking for is uh, a lot of speed at safety because we need they've got the thumper um in jamal adams they've got that in the box guy but what they need is the speed on the back end that can play that um that you know single high safety in the cover three Mm -hmm. cover one and um just have the range necessary to make plays back there and that's a harder find yeah than what we were thinking about if they were yeah. more of a cover two look. True. Yeah. I came up with a, with a couple of guys, a couple of hybrid guys, and, and I'm still thinking that they're going to make a, a little bit of a scheme schematic transition this, this next season. Um, I still think that that's true um, based on who they're bringing in from Minnesota. And then uh, Desai, Desai <laughs> is uh, a guy that's going to help with that transition too. And so I still think that that's on the table. Who knows how it's going to play out? We'll know, you know, within the next couple of weeks, I think we'll have a better mm-hmm. idea. But a guy like uh, Petrie Baylor, or excuse me, Jalen Petrie from Baylor, uh, really turned out at the Senior Bowl uh, mm-hmm. as kind of a guy that can play all over the place. He's six foot, 196. He was actually known at that size for being a thumper in college and being able to make the hits and play around the line of scrimmage and so forth. But he's got four, four, three speed as well. So uh, in addition to flashing as a physical hitter, He's very good instinctual um, in in coverage and um, especially out of the slot. So he's a guy that could give you a little bit of scheme diversity. Has the speed though to uh, to to go into those two high safety looks. 
Yeah, I, I I like him. I think he'd be a good fit, especially because I think you can you can get him in um, late in the third, early in the fourth in that range. Um, a guy that I saw when I was you know going through all of this was uh, Kirby Joseph out of Illinois. Mm, I really uh, like him. He's a guy that yeah, he's a uh, a free safety and he does all the free safety things. But if you you need him to, he can line up on the slot and cover like a cornerback, and that's just not that common especially for a guy that if you look around you know uh the draft pundits he's not highly regarded he's a guy that people are thinking of as like a sixth round pick i think he goes earlier than that probably yeah i do too well he came Um, into the senior bowl kind of unheralded but he left the senior bowl with his with a name because yeah, that's everyone true. everyone was raving about him there and, and a was, lot of and Nagy was too. Yeah, he was a guy who was certainly <laughs> ball hawking. I mean, just showing off a nose for the football and making he closes as well. Ball, so yeah. He, he closes very well. He's got good length, six one, two hundred pounds. Um, so he looks more like a corner in coverage than he does a safety. I I, I like him. Um mm-hmm. and a good tackler too, like you said. A couple so of the you, other names, yeah. Leon say, what O'Neal. Leon, Leon, I was going to say, yeah. what, what do you think of Leon O'Neal? Because yeah. he was, he's a fun guy to watch. He's another he guy is. that can really be a thumper for you, but he's also mm-hmm. good in coverage. So it's another guy with great size at 6'1", 2'11". Uh, so that's, that height is just really going to help him, um, especially with tight ends, and then runs a four five three forty. So he's going to be able to stay on pretty much anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, a guy like Cam Taylor Britt out of Nebraska is another interesting guy, and Vernon McKinley out of Oregon, I thought was uh, was uh, would be interesting. Five eleven, one ninety four, runs a four four eight. Um, he's more of a free safety type. Yeah, that's my list. So, um, let's go. Let's shift over to cornerback because the Seahawks are desperate at cornerback right now. They have one I like cornerback. This cornerback class. Oh, they they have one cornerback on the roster, and he's coming off a patellar tendon injury and that's a really bad injury to come back from so um yeah i know the guy that you like i, I know who you want to talk about and well that i have a few Tar- i have a couple Tarek, yeah but you more than anyone you want to talk about Tarek <laughs> woolen of utsa he's crazy good i you know i didn't know anything <laughs> about him before before this process started out of the university of texas at san antonio i did my homework i know that now uh, six four two zero five six four two zero five. So remember the six four two zero five part, and then I'm going to tell you he runs a four three forty, mm-hmm. like a four three four forty. What? Thirty three and a half inch arms, seventy nine inch wingspan. Plays the ball like it's thrown to him. Like he's the receiver. The other guy's the corner. He's going to make the play. Um, he's just kind of got that attitude. Um, he's a physical run supporter guy similar in the way that like Antoine Win- Winfield was I, you know I was kind of a Antoine Winfield kind of a guy in the in last year's draft ends up getting drafted or the year before ends up getting drafted and, and you know it's all pro basically um and and he would have been a perfect fit in the Seahawks defense but a guy like um Tariq Woolen would be definitely a guy obviously now that he's shown out at the senior bowl and then he's going to test well I'm sure with a really nice vertical and, and so forth at the combine oh, with, yeah. with, with the straight line speed, um, he's going to be creeping up draft boards. And so now I don't know where he's going to be. You know, prior to this, I thought maybe fourth fourth or fifth round now, probably he's going to be one of those guys that goes to the back of the second or third round. I See, if, if somebody takes a, a guy, chance. He's a guy. He is the defensive version of DK Metcalf. It's big long, fast, athletic, just crazy physical skills. But his tape yeah. isn't great. I was just going to say he that. Doesn't, he was used in a weird way, and he played at this little tiny school. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, all of that. And you go, I think draft pundits are going to fall in love with him, and they're going to have him, you know, first round grade. And then, or, you know, maybe a second round grade. And, yeah, and, and yeah I range. think third, third round grade is and probably then, where he's going to be. And then he's get, the NFL is going to be a little less sure on him because he's got a lower floor, really high ceiling, mm-hmm. but a lower floor. And so he's going to drop a little bit. Yeah, I do and, think that that is correct. And I think that he's probably going to go in the fourth round. I'm, I'm talking like 130 range-ish. And um, I still think the Seahawks would be a great landing spot for him with all that oh, set. Man. 
because I, of the of the tools that we have here to be able to coach him up and um just like the old school type stuff i know that we've gone away from the measurables quote unquote of sea hockey type corners in the last year or two uh when pete's made exceptions and we've got desperate let's be honest we got some practice squad guy from the san francisco 49ers that turned out you know but who was counting on that even pete wasn't counting on that and so mm -hmm. i still think we revert back to those old standard types that we do like with the length and the height and so forth and start running a few more press coverage options out of the out of the scheme that we've gotten away from uh and this guy would be a great fit and a guy that you know especially if you were going to spend if he was sitting there in the fifth round it'd be a no-brainer for me because oh in the you, fifth you, round it's yeah you, you, you in pick the this guy round, up and no -brainer you for me well when we have two fourth round picks so you take one of them you work on a project maybe he plays this year maybe he gives you some reps he's certainly going to be a great special teams guy uh, probably your number one gunner and then uh you take what else you can get out of uh year one and then by year two he's ready to kind of step into a larger role that that would be a great pick i think yeah i i would um i would take him in the fourth round without without any reservation whatsoever you've, you've kind of fallen in love um, with this guy from uh university of texas at san antonio well i kind of have like i think just like i said i think he is kind of the dk metcalf of uh on the defensive side of the ball, just you look at him. Look at it. Mm. Look at the way he looks. His his his, his height, demeanor his too, Keith. Is he is not one of those laid back guys either. He's very mm -hmm. aggressive and he thumps you when he hits you. He's a very yeah. good tackler. I just think he would be such a fantastic fit in Seattle, and I really wanted to see that happen. So, I mean, okay, only one team can get him. Um, who else? Who There's, else? other? Than, I have two yeah. other guys that I've rated pretty high that were at the Senior Bowl. Um, a guy that I really have a, a hard time pronouncing his name, so I'll give it a shot. Uh, uh, Caleb Evans out of Missouri, 6'2", 201. He's got 32 and 3 eighths inch arms, which is a known criteria for the Seahawks. Must have over 32 inch arms. Runs a 4'4", 8'40". He's extremely aggressive. Comes up. Uh, he's kind of a press man, kind of a guy, but also plays zone. Um, good line, good straight line speed, good awareness, good reaction skills, break, you know, out of breaks, all that kind of stuff. So he's a guy to watch. The other guy would be, uh, Alton a. Taylor out of Tennessee. <laughs> what do you think of Alton a. Taylor, Keith? Well, I mean, he's got, he's got some measurables that I think is, is going to make him interesting. I'm, I, I don't know much about what he looked like at the senior bowl because I he was just not a guy that I have any notes on. Um, but in his tape um at Tennessee, he was really up and down, had some flaws in his in his technique that can be adjusted. I mean, it's not like um a guy that's you know, like he doesn't have the skills. Like if you've got the physical traits and can be coached, he could be very good. I think he could be a good slot guy now. Somebody may try him on the outside, but he's gonna be a good zone guy right away and then um I think he's got good recovery skills and good recognition skills so he can kind of flow to the ball fairly quickly. Um, and then another guy, let's see, did I have another guy? I think I did. I'm surprised uh, you haven't mentioned Darian Kendrick out of Georgia. Well, there's a couple more guys. Darian Kendrick, I was, but let me let me tell you the, the issues I had with Darian Kendrick. Please give me just a half a second here while I look up his notes really quick. Um, the reason that I, I struggled with Darian Kendrick was his arm length, I believe. Mm. Uh, so you know, thir I did, I did 30, yeah, 30 and they call it six eighths, but let's call it three quarters, um, 30 and three quarter inch arms with a 74 inch wings, wingspan key. That's a disqualification. Seahawks, Seahawks like 32 or longer. Yeah. So a couple other guys that do meet the criteria. Um, well, one guy anyway, and, and, and a guy close to home for most Seahawks fans. Jalen Watson out of Washington State, 6'3", 197, runs a 4'4", 440, 32 and 5 eighths inch arms. He's going to be a guy that's going to be available later um, just because of the lack of refinement and, and so forth. But He's actually a really good scheme fit for Seattle, much more so than for other teams because of his length and his speed make him a good cover three corner. What he's not is a guy who's very sticky in coverage. You're not going to use him in a lot of man coverage situations, um, or at least not going to use him well in a lot of man coverage situations. So he's a guy that's going to drop because a lot of teams aren't going to look at him and, and see a guy that they can use. But the CX can look at a guy like that and go, we can get a lot out of that guy in our scheme. Yes. Um, so 
So if they think it yes, covers three, exactly. he's, he's a guy that could be that could be really good in this and game. And Pete Pete loves a good tackler. And that he is as well. Yes. A good physical tackler. Plus he's got mm-hmm. the the frame to put on, you know, a little extra. So seven, seven, eight pounds, get up to two oh five. He could be a real thumper in your defense. Um, you know, and he can build those skills to be sticky. I mean, he's got the speed to be sticky. He just needs to refine his technique and, and learn some things about the NFL and about, uh, you know, who he's going up against and stuff. I think he, he can get better at that. Um, all right, let's get to the offense. I, was um, saying, we're, I know we're at 34 minutes. On I the know. Defense. Should we, I should know. we take a, should we take a break on this and come back? Yeah, maybe and, we should. And, and do the offense separately. Cause I want to make sure that? that we, we spend the time on some of these offensive players, but especially on the offensive line. I didn't even see where have, we were at. The Seahawks have three starters on the offensive line that we don't know if they're, um, you know, what's going on there. So they could, they could be in the market for a lot of offensive linemen. So I think we should spend, uh, spend some time on the offense and I don't want to feel rushed. So thank you for, uh, for monitoring the show time and all that good stuff, Keith. You're my best friend because <laughs> of that right there. Just so, that alone is you've worth your weight in gold, my friend. So you say that, but I looked up. About 30 <laughs> seconds, maybe less before I said that. So it didn't the, feel like we were into it that long. The the monitoring part is um kind of a lie. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get out of here then. Follow Keith on Twitter at Myers NFL. I'm at Alpstead NFL. The show's at PF underscore um whatever it is, playbook, <laughs> pro pro football playbook. Um, um you're you're pro, you're, you're, you're doing the wrong outro. There I know. Go. I'm trying. Oh, there we go. Uh, and, and Seahawks at, at Hawks playbook is the, there you go. the Twitter account. <laughs> find us on our website. You can find us on our, um, on our podcast platform and YouTube and all that good stuff. Apologies, uh, for screwing anybody up on the outro. All right. Take care. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Seahawks Playbook Podcast listeners, thanks for joining us for another edition of the show. You can find us on Twitter. Bill is at NW Seahawk. Keith is at Myers NFL. And the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.